Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to complete Carnage Reigns and talk about chapters 5, 6, and 7, which was the Omega issue. So I have Carnage number 14 here for part 5 we're going to discuss today. Miles Morales number 7, which is part 6 of the event. And then the final part, Carnage Reigns. And like I said, I was trying to get connecting covers, but I don't always have that option um, if I can you know, talk to my comic store beforehand and know like which issues have those connecting covers. Um, then I can try to work it out, but sometimes they get shorted on stuff. And so I usually just take what I get and I, you know, I don't like to make a big fuss out of it. It's like, it's cool to have connecting covers, uh, especially with some of the connecting covers they've had for this event. And then some are symbiotes in general. But for me, I'm like, yeah, it's at the end of the day, I just want to read the story and I want to talk about it with you guys. So for me, I don't get too picky. If they tell me, hey, we got shorted on this or we got shorted on that, I just, I'm like, hey, that's fine. And in fact, actually, they got shorted on this book on all covers, uh, this Miles Morales issue. So I actually waited an extra two weeks. I think I got this the same day I got Carnage Reigns or no, it was the week after Carnage Reigns. So I got this and I was like, okay, I can't read the you know the ending of the story yet until i read the miles issue so i ended up waiting for like two weeks before i could finally finish the story and that's why i'm recording it later uh, than i recorded the other one and i'm finally bringing it to you so i don't have any digital codes for this marvel does this new thing now where in a lot of the books they put this page here where you go to the website, you take a picture of the comic book itself, and then you upload it. And then within like a couple days, maybe sometimes a week, they'll get a code back to you. Um, you know, I know they're working as fast as they can on it, but uh, I don't know. It seems like so much extra work. I wish they would just print the codes in here again because it was just easier for me to give them out to you guys. Uh, but now I have to request them and hope they show up in time before I upload the episode. And if they don't, then I'll just save that code for later. And then in a future episode, I'll share it at that time. So that's kind of what I'm running with here. So I don't think I have any digital codes in this episode, so I apologize. Um, if I do, I'll put one up right now, but I don't think I do. So uh, so I'm sorry for that. Um, but let's talk about this and let's just get to the ending of this storyline. Because like I said, the first four issues I thought were a really good setup. And I do like moments, like uh, major moments within these last three issues. But I do feel like the ending felt a little rushed at times. Like I feel like it could have maybe gone on one more issue. And that's rare for me. Normally I think things should be edited down. I'm an editor, so I kind of want things edited to where it's more succinct. This I thought was pretty succinct for a crossover story. But it left me just going like, man, if there was like 10 more pages even... I feel like you could have got more of a, a stronger ending with uh, with some better wrap up than what we got here. I don't think this is a bad story by any means. I just felt like that landing, they did the best they could with the page count. But if I just wish they got like 10 more pages, I would have paid another you know dollar or something for an extra 10 pages to get a more, you know, um, you know, solid ending, I feel like. Uh, but we'll talk about that. We'll get into some specifics. So we are going to get into spoilers in this one. The last one, I kind of avoided some spoilers. Uh, but in this one, we're probably going to talk about um, full spoilers, or at least some of the major stuff. So uh, this issue, the first one, we're going to start with Carnage. And uh, this, I like, you know, Alex is doing a great work. Cody's doing a good work, um, you know, and everyone's kind of... Uh, playing off each other really well. I feel like there's a consistency with the books. Even though they're different writers, this feels tonally very well crafted. And I gotta give them credit because that's one of the things I always harp on, especially with something like Dark Web where everything just felt like a mess. Like Al's you know, voice on the Venom book didn't feel like you know, uh, Zeb's, you know, or in line with Zeb's voice on the main book um, and Spider-Man and, you know, and the main dark web stuff. And and then same thing with the, you know, the other tie-ins, they just kind of felt all over the place. And while they had moments of, you know, good things in each of them, there was a lot of inconsistencies and totally just all over the place. And I really didn't like that about dark web. I just felt like it needed to be more communication between everybody to make it feel like one narrative and one story. And I feel like with Carnage Reigns, they did a great job. And maybe it's because there's less voices that have to communicate. It's just two writers and then, you know, the handful of artists they're working with less than what, you know, Dark Web had. But then again, that's the thing, right? You don't always have to make a 20 issue crossover series. If you just have a, a simple story you want to tell, knock it out in six or seven issues. And that's what Carnage Reigns does. And like I said, although I wish it had maybe 10 more pages to wrap up some parts of the ending a little bit more it still does a good enough job for what it has, like the page count it has. So in this one, you start off with Cletus Cassidy actually talking to the Carnage entity, like almost like they're separate, even though they're not. That's the only thing I feel like is a little inconsistent at times is really defining what these are. You know, like the God Carnage, I feel like they really know what that is. But this Cletus, he feels all over the place. Uh, you know, some days he's like, 
I want everyone to remember the name of Cletus Cassidy. But then he turns into Carnage and goes, let's bring Carnage out, you know, and I'm like, so what is it? Do you want people to remember Cletus or, you know, or do you want like if that's the story you're telling, why deviate from that? So that's one of the few inconsistencies that I feel like is in this book. But um, but otherwise, I think they do a good job writing Cletus in general. And I and he is scary in this, uh, like making people stab each other and laugh and stuff was is pretty dark. That's like Joker level stuff there. And so I thought they did, they, you know, they did a good job making Cletus scary in this. Um, so Cletus, he's obviously tapped in. He can control, you know, any Stark tech that's out there. He's getting into people's phones. There's creepy dudes on the Internet that are like, you know, praising Cletus and all the stuff he's doing. And those three, you know, people that we talked about, Goo Guy or whatever and uh, Carnage for the Win, all those guys actually play a part in this story and in the ending, which I was didn't think that was going to happen. And uh, I was like, oh, that'd be cool if these guys all had a part to play. And then they do. And I was like, oh, wow, that's actually that was a good idea, I think. So you have Red Goblin showing up here and he's trying to help Miles out. And we are going to reveal all the Cape Killers members because we're going to talk about them in this one. I kept them some of them a secret in the last episode. But in this one, we're going to talk about the Cape Killers. And they're all trying to work together. This mob has showed up. You know, they're all infected by carnage in some way. And they're attacking. But Red Goblin's able to purge them and clean them and eat their, uh, you know, eat their symbiotes or absorb their symbiotes or uh, dissipate their symbiotes. Whatever he's doing, he's curing these people, but it's taking a lot out of them. And it's causing him to tap more into Cletus Cassidy's mind and see his memories and stuff. So it's coming at a toll. And I always like that. I hate when they do that with uh, stories where they have someone who's like got this power to save the day. But it doesn't, you know, there's no sacrifice with it. I like this because there is a sacrifice. Like, you know, uh, Normie is not doing well. As he is curing people, he's turning more into a carnage himself and more of a Cletus. And he's seeing into Cletus's mind and it's freaking him out big time. Um, so meanwhile, you have Gao and she, her and the new head of Stark Enterprise, Mr. Hang or Hung or whatever his name is. They're, uh, they're working together to try to come up with a cure and they have Kenneth in their custody and they're trying to use him as bait or keep him away from Cletus, at least for now. Uh, but that is going to, you know, they're going to end up bringing him right back to the battle at some point on a helicopter. So I don't know what their ultimate plan was there, but it, uh, it didn't seem to, there was another inconsistency where it's like, all right, he's, you know, wrapped up here and he's under, you know, their watchful eye. But then later on, he's in a helicopter with them, just handcuffed when he has no hand and he just slips right out of the handcuff. I'm like, mm, OK, so there's that's a little bit all over the place. But again, just nitpick stuff, really, uh, because overall, this is a fun book. And you have finally the giant Iron Man Sentinel things show up and they start fighting and there's a big kind of a kaiju fight going on. But uh, Cletus makes short work of one of the robots. And then the other one is there's a cool struggle with it where it's trying to upload this antivirus thing into Cletus and it's getting there. It's like 97%, 98%. And there's, there's actual tension. I was reading this going like, holy crap, is, is this thing going to succeed or is it going to lose? And uh, I won't spoil that part for you, but it was pretty neat, the outcome. Uh, but obviously Carnage is still going to keep going because we still got two more issues of this. So ultimately Carnage is okay, but there's, there's some neat moments there of what happens in that, whether the virus uploads or not. There's some cool stuff. But then we go back to the ground level, and that's what I like. We keep going back and forth. They're reminding you there's ground level heroes, and then there's this big kaiju battle going on with a building sentinel carnage thing fighting, you know, Iron Man sentinels. Um, but in this battle, you have, you know, Miles going, all right, let's get Red Goblin up to Carnage and have him absorb Cletus, you know, itself, and absorb the extreme biote and stuff. And they're like, are you sure you can handle this Red Goblin? He's like, yeah, fine, I, I can do this. And they're like, but he's turning into a carnage. And they're like, are you sure? Because you're looking a little, you know, crazed right now. And he's like, this is our only shot. We got to do it. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. Like Red Goblin has a role to play. Miles has a role to play. So him and Mac uh, Gargan, Scorpion, are trying to get Red Goblin up the building into the room and take on Cletus Cassidy. So that's what this whole issue is about. And I won't go into every little spoiler here, but there's some super cool moments in here. And their plan obviously doesn't go, you know, as planned. <laughs> it's like a, it's tough because it's, there's really good moments in it, but it's not something as simple as, oh, they tried to absorb Cletus and it didn't work. It's not that simple. It's something that's, you know, Red Goblin just, he's tuckered out. He's, he's starting to get crazed. He's seeing inside Cletus's mind. And it's a lot for a little kid, you know, at the end of the day, Normie's a little kid and they start realizing that and Miles is like, you know what, I'm kicking into, you know, big brother mode and I'm going to protect Red Goblin here. And I really, really like that. I love that Miles, who is an older brother now with his sister, he takes this interest in Normie as like, okay, this is a kid. And I seen his face now kind of like with the symbiote moving around it. 
I'm going to protect him at all costs. And uh, and Mac, you need to help me protect him. It's just a kid. And so that was really cool. And I like that Mac and Miles kind of rally together. And Mac even takes a leadership role in the next issue. But before we get there, you know, we have Carnage kind of evolved. Now that he doesn't have Kenneth, he needs to be his own entity to go out into this battle. So he grows the dragon wings from the, you know, because he's part dragon symbiote, part extreme biote. And, uh, and he's pulling all those resources together and he's upgraded himself but he's now no longer part of the building, but everyone who's infected is still infected. So there's, you know, the civilians are still attacking, but he makes one last ditch effort to send out a signal to the three creepos online who, uh, you know, were writing about him and saying, oh, we love this. You know, like I'm, hi I'm hiding in the, the, you know, the basement for my wife, you know, she's out, you know, with her friends, girls night out, and I'm down here, you know, watching all the carnage stuff and, you know, tweeting about it and writing about it. And so it's like these creepy dudes online that worship and like what Cletus is doing, you know, bring down everything, kill everything, um, and they get recruited. So all these old Iron Man armors show up infected by Cletus to recruit these three guys as pilots for the armor. Uh, which I'm kind of like, why do you need them? If you can control the armor already, like why do you need humans in it? I think there's a reason for that with the symbiote, it needs it. Um, so I think this is like a temporary thing. And then with the human hosts, it'll then, you know, expand and they can, and then he can control them and pilot them as meat puppets. But, uh, you know, because we know that's what's going to happen. But otherwise, I'm like, why? Why? If it can pilot suits, what does it really need people for? But again, carnage is carnage, you know. And so he likes to mess with people, especially people who worship him. So he goes and recruits them to put on suits. And while that's happening, this issue does end with what's been building up this whole time, which is Tony Stark finally learning that Cletus has come back. And he said... I knew he was going to come back. He took my Stark tech. He took the Extreme Biote. And I've been waiting for him to resurface. And now he has. And I have this new suit of armor that's literally prepared for this battle. So Tony is launching out to join the battle, which he does in Miles Morales number seven here. And this battle is pretty much that's what this whole book is. It's a battle. You get the three weirdos online uh, getting, you know, into their suits and then taken over by Carnage. And, you know, they're like, no, what, what are you doing? Like, we're loyal servants. And he's like, yes, you are. And I'm going to control you now and send you possibly to your deaths while I, you know, um, slink away if I need to. You're like my backup plan. Although that doesn't work out too well either. I thought it would have been really cool if he just took these three guys and they went off and you never saw them again until the very end of the book where it's like, oh, this was his backup plan. Kind of like Ultron, you know, in Age of Ultron where in the movie where he tried to get one drone away. I'm like, that would have been cool if Cletus infected these three guys and just sent them out somewhere. And so that way, if he did lose this battle, he still had, you know, three people he was meat puppeting and he could still survive in some way out there. I thought that would have been cool, but that's not how the story goes. Uh, those three idiots show up to the battle and I'm like, why did he do that? Why did he send them right to this battle? He doesn't need them. Um, and they get taken out pretty quickly by Miles and, and Tony. So I, I don't get it. But in this one, we got the members of the Cape Killer. So Taskmaster, he was Taskmaster was someone who I kept like a secret in the last episode when I was discussing them. Um, and then Hightail, I think is her name. She's like a speedster. Um, so they have big moments in this. And that's what I really like is that uh, Electro, you know, you have uh, the female Electro that's here. Um, all these members of the team, they have moments to shine. Like I really got to give, you know, Cody and everyone credit on this, especially this book where Cody really delivers. He has all these villains step up and have these big moments where they're like using their powers, combining powers, uh, Electro and Miles like put their electric powers together. So Miles charges up his Venom Blast and Electro, you know, absorbs it, uses it and throws it at Carnage. And it's some really cool stuff. It's like some Avengers level stuff here. And I dug it, you know, and even though some of them get stabbed, they get hurt, they get, you know, they're wounded. Miles steps in. We got to save this person, even though they're a villain. We got to help them. You know, and some of the villains are even like, dude, this doesn't make us friends. And he's like, I don't care. It's not about being friends. He goes, although I will grow on you, I promise. And they're like, uh, you're weird, kid. <laughs> you know, so I like that Miles is is really shining as a hero in this book. Like you, every time you get a Carnage story, you're like, oh, man, we need Venom and we need, you know, Peter Parker to handle this. They keep saying that in this book, you know, Miles is like, I wish Peter was here. I wish someone else was joining this fight. And yeah, you're kind of wondering where the hell is Peter during all this? But he's really not needed. Miles really rallies the troops and him and Matt Gargan are awesome together. I really like the dynamic they do with Mac and Miles in this and building off of past relationships of stories that didn't get full payoffs, like in the Absolute Carnage stuff and, and uh, you know, leading up to King in Black where Miles had a Carnage suit. And, you know, Mac had his spine ripped out 
and he was healing and Miles, you know, we never knew what happened. Like he got rid of the suit and we're like, how? Like what happened? It just jumps from one moment to the next and we never got a real conclusion there. But this series has kind of tapped into some of that and built off those relationships to make that story matter even more. And that's what good writers do, I feel. And so I think Cody and Alex are doing that in this book. Even if I have some complaints about some inconsistencies and stuff, overall, this is a really solid book. It's a really solid run. So all this battling, all this you know fighting and everything, and in the end, Miles ends up getting wounded. He is severely wounded. After Iron Man shows up and helps make short work of the three idiots, it comes down to just fighting you know the main carnage now the main cletus and uh, and miles in that battle gets severely wounded almost to a point where it could kill him um so he gets stabbed right through and iron man's like look kid i'm gonna i you know i wasn't expecting you to get stabbed but i knew someone would probably get hurt around me so i have some nanites on my current suit to heal you and while it's healing you it's going to pump you full of adrenaline. So for the next week or so, you're probably not going to sleep. He goes, but it's going to heal you and you can stay in the battle with me if you choose. And he does. And they have this great moment where Miles' suit changes into the Iron Spider suit, like a new version of it, uh, you know, courtesy of Tony Stark. So I like that. I like that they're playing off the Spider-Man, you know, uh, Iron Man stuff from the movies. You know, that was a big relationship in those films. And I like that they're playing off that here with Miles and building that relationship because by this last issue miles and tony they also work really well together i gotta say even though miles is consistently an underdog in this he knows he's out of his league he gets his shoulder bitten so his arm is hard to use for a couple issues he gets stabbed here and you know tony's able to help him and save him and then now he has this new iron spider suit like he's he's earning this by sticking in the fight even when he knows he's going to lose that is the most spider-man thing ever <laughs> and that's what i really like about this because there are times where i'm i was worried about miles and then i saw him got stabbed and i'm like okay i know they're not going to kill him but holy crap like they full-on stab him like through the sternum and i'm like that's what are they going to do and so it's so cool to see this new iron suit on him and him join the fight again with iron man in this final issue so in the final pages here, we got Carnage Reigns. This is the one where I'm like, this was a good issue. The artwork's amazing. But I do wish it had at least five or ten more pages to add on to it. Because there's a point in this where it just starts. They're like, all right, we got to wrap this up. Uh, we got to get through this. Because there's all this tension they're building. They have the these temporary Avengers, uh, you know, Iron Man calls them, where he gets Taskmaster, Scorpion, and uh, Hightail and everyone. And he's like, all right, here's what we're going to do. You know, and Mac takes point. Mac's like, all right. Electro, you're going to do this. Hightail, I need you to do this because I know you have that power. Um, you know, Taskmaster, we need this from you. And Taskmaster's kind of like, eh. And Iron Man's like, fall in line, everybody. And it's really cool the way everyone works together and, and the way Max steps up and kind of be, you know, is like a leader in some regards to this in while working with actual heroes. And he's still like, no, I'm going to call a couple shots too. And he makes good decisions. I really, really dug that. I, you know, anytime you do these crossovers, that's the thing about Dark Web that I didn't like, and uh, and some of the other crossovers we've had over the last few years that we've talked about, like Extreme Carnage and stuff. It's like there's good moments in them, but the main thing, the reason you do a crossover is any character you include, they have to have good moments. There has to be great chemistry, things you do with the characters that make sense and escalate them in some way. And literally every character in this, I feel, is cooler. Than I thought they were before. Um, I like Miles a little bit more in this book. I like uh, Tony. You know, Tony's Tony. He's he's kind of a wash. I always like Tony Stark because he, he's always a jerk, and that always works in a scenario where you need a jerk who's also very heroic and and right most of the time. Uh, so I like Tony in this too. But Matt Gargan is awesome. Hightail didn't even know that much about the character. Really like her in this one. Um, Electro, I liked her in this one. And also Taskmaster, who I am a big fan of. But he's consistently like Tony. He's good in this as well. So a lot of cool stuff. Agent, you know, even Agent Gal, who shows up here with, um, you know, Kenneth. She brings him back to the battle for some reason. Um, Kenneth gets a sliver of Carnage symbiote, bonds with it, and joins the battle to try to help out Carnage. And, you know, say like, hey, let's go find the God Carnage and absorb him. And, you know, maybe we'll save the universe or maybe you'll be the one to destroy the universe. But we got to go stop that thing at least. And I don't know why Kenneth cares so much. I think it's because he's a killer and he thought killing people was an art. But this will bring the end of all things and then it would get rid of art. And I think that's kind of his motivation. Uh, and I'm just kind of reaching there, I feel like. I don't know if the book really says that. But 
Anyway, Kenneth is like, I'm going to go stop Carnage. I took this sliver. I'm going to go stop him. But of course, that doesn't work because Cletus is in charge of that sliver. And he ends up killing Kenneth in this book. So Kenneth does meet his end here, technically, uh, physically. But his mind is now absorbed into the codex or into the mind of Cletus. And so he's in there rummaging around Cletus's uh, memories and trying to distract him so that the heroes can get a one up and start beating him. So that's what's happening. So the three idiots get taken down. Uh, Kenneth gets killed and taken down uh, and everyone's at their, you know, at their last wits end. Everyone's, you know, battling. This is where it kind of ramps up. They just kind of speed through this fight scene and some of the story and plot. But then they get to the end and you have this big moment where you have dragon carnage, Iron Man, Cletus, extreme bio thing. Uh, and everyone is, figured out, all right, here's what we're going to do. Miles, you're going to use the last of your electric uh, venom blast to weaken them. And then we're going to do this. Max going to do that. And then Iron Man's going to come in and be absorbed by the symbiote, by Carnage, and then release like a, a Carnage bomb that he created to wipe out, uh, you know, everything. And so that is what happens. And Iron Man sets it off and takes out Carnage for good, or it looks like it takes him out for good. Um, so yeah, really cool. You know, this book was a lot of fun. Uh, in the end, all the people are saved. Gao is still all right. The Cape Killer survived, um, maybe a feeling a little bit more heroic than they've ever felt before, which I like for Matt Gargan. I think that's a good path for that character. I wanted him to be a Venom, you know, like a rogues gallery villain because of the suit, you know, so um, you had in the Costa run, he showed up a couple times as like a villain for Venom. But then in the Donny Cage run, he showed up and met Miles. And since then, they've been having him be more of a Miles villain. And I, I like that because now he's becoming more of a Miles anti-hero. And I like that too. <laughs> so yeah, all everything they're doing with Matt Gargan to me is A-OK. -okay. It's been it's been really awesome. It's made me like that character a little bit more. But in the end, obviously, Tony has to take his you know iron spider suit back. It was a temporary loan. He needs those nanites back in his suit to repower him so he can at least get away. Uh, and he's like, yeah, we got one last mission. And he's like, oh, wait, is Carnage, you know, do we got to scan for Carnage? And, you know, Iron Man's like, no, I think Carnage is definitely gone for now. And he's like, uh, but we do have one more mission, Miles. And Miles like, what is it? And he goes, uh, I'm looking for like the nearest White Castle. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to take you to White Castle. <laughs> so Iron Man and Spider-Man go to White Castle, uh, which is really cool. So, you know, after their battle and they bond. And he tells him, he's like, kid, you did really good. And I liked it. I thought, I, again, cool moments for cool characters. And I dug it. Miles gets some time at the end with his family and gets to see them as they moved into their new apartment. So he can still kind of help out. And he's calming them down because they're like, we saw on the news, carnage, everything. And he's like, it's okay. Iron Man showed up. You know, we worked together. We turned some villains into, you know, temporary heroes. And I'm kind of proud of myself. And I'm like, yeah, you should be, man. You killed it on this one. So in the end, though, there is still a mem uh, piece of this symbiote left. I don't know why that's... Someone hasn't scooped that up by now, but it does make Cletus's face and it says the end with a question mark. So obviously we're going to get more Cletus at some point because after Death of Venomverse, which is the next major event, that's where we're going to follow God Carnage. But before we get there, the last episode for our Carnage week is going to be tomorrow's episode for Web of Carnage number one. And this will help kind of tell you where God Carnage is and set up Death of Venomverse, which will be coming in August. So we're going to have that very, very soon. And I will try to get, you know, those reviews up as soon as those issues come out as well. Um, but, but after we have Death of Venomverse, we do have a new Carnage number one that's coming out. And that will be coming out in the fall. And that will feature, um, you know, Cletus Cassidy's return in this like Evil Dead homage kind of image. No cabin in the background, but still. Yeah, really cool image. But so there's going to be a new Carnage book coming out this fall. And it looks like it's going to be the return to basics with Cletus Cassidy as the you know host for Carnage, whatever they do with it. So we'll find that out. But I, apparently this is kind of a setup for that. And uh, and I was kind of hoping more of a just end Carnage kind of thing. But I guess you can't. There's just too many fans out there of the guy and too many people who want him to go back to basics. And I think that's what all this is about is finishing Carnage Reigns and kind of putting that to bed. Um, you know, the Deadpool book, we're going to do a Deadpool week at some point this summer and talk about all the symbiote stuff that's been popping up with Deadpool recently and coming up in the bigger, badder book that he has coming out where uh, Venom Pool returns. So we will do a whole week of Deadpool with symbiotes at some point in probably August. So be on the lookout for those episodes. Um, but and then you have God Carnage. And I think that story is going to wrap up with Cullen Bunn's Death of the Venomverse. So that'll put that to bed. And hopefully the new Carnage series will bring us back to more basic level stuff. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. That's just my hope. Uh, but obviously we won't know until the book comes out. So 
Anyway, let me know what you think of Carnage Reigns. If you have a different opinion of me, same opinion, whatever it is, let me know down below. Do you think he could have used a little bit more page count? I mean, I like I said, it, it's fine. Uh, but there are p points in the story, like in the battle, where they just rush through stuff. And there's like a bunch of dialogue in the page. I'm like, eh, I feel like this could have been sp sp you know, spread out a little bit just to build more tension here. Make you wonder if the heroes are going to not survive. And obviously we know they're going to, but they did good moments in these other issues where I was really worried. I was like, how is this going to end? Like, I'm really curious. I got sucked into this one. And I think it's because this is some of the best you know, writing for Miles I've seen in the comics in a long time. I you know, I don't typically like a lot of Miles stories in the comics. He's a great character, but they never really tapped into his potential, I feel, in a lot of the comic books. Uh, some of them they have, but not a lot of them. My favorite version of Miles is the animated movie stuff. Um, you know, the Spider-Verse movies. They're fantastic. Great takes on Miles because they take all the core elements of them and make them very Spider-Man and Peter Parker-y. And this book, I think, does that as well. So I'm glad that these writers probably took a page from that, uh, you know, from the, those movies, because Miles is consistently written really well in this. And I think he's one of my stronger and more favorite moments of Carnage Reigns is how well they handled Miles. Uh, but I also like the Red Goblin stuff. He shows up in the last issue as a last ditch effort to help out. And everyone plays their part. Everyone gets their moment, even the Cape Killers and Iron Man. And so for that reason... I like this book, and I, I give it a high recommendation. If it comes out in trade, if you haven't bought the single issues, get the trade when it comes out and check it out for yourself. And if you already have, like I said, let me know down below. Let me know your thoughts down there, and we'll keep talking, as always, in the comments. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.